happy campers. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise if you're alive. Uh, so we're starting today's panel, and it's breaking cultural barriers in film with, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Nikola Juricko! <laughs> See, now you can feel like an oh, MMA man, fighter. Dude, it's a rock and roll, man. Like, I'm a rock and roll star. I feel like that. Well, you are a rock and roll star. You Thank have a you. You have a band. Yeah, I have a band. I have a single that uh, recently we, we, we land, launched and the album is coming next month. So that's it. Oh, you're... you're, you're, you are, you're I am a rock star. Releasing the whole al album. Yeah, but it's all on our, our Yugoslavian or Serbian language. So, but yeah, yeah. nevertheless, the groove is cool. I, I've, I've heard the song. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually really, really good. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. So, uh, among your... Uh, you, you are a Swiss knife of a man. Oh, in terms you. of... Uh, you do... Uh, you're an actor? Yeah, I'm a huge star in Serbia. The, 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 the hugest. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, well, your dossier is uh, quite impressive, sir. You've yeah. done... Uh, yeah, Wikipedia uh, can do uh, magic to you. I, I, <laughs> I no, have, no, no, it's I a have, real, it's a real. I thing. have people <laughs> filling out my Wikipedia <laughs> page as well. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, swimming through La Manche. In one second or whatever, you know. <laughs> First man to eat. Uh, wrestle like, a bear. Yeah, wrestle the bear and, and don't fall in love. You know? uh, you're also, uh, your, your background is also stand-up comedy. No, I started recently, five years ago. Yeah. When, so I, when, I, I, when I choose to, to, to move to America, I start doing stand-up after my long career in theater and being serious actor, I, I choose not to be anymore serious. To wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it up and, and try uh, stand up. And I really like it because audience love it. I love it. It's quite simple. You need just a microphone and that's it. And you, you just know? talk about yourself and it's... Uh... Yeah, and it's immediate communication. They, people immediately start to laugh or they don't. You know? It's a <laughs> brutal sport though. Yeah, it is, but I really like it from... Uh, uh, my, I play 20 or something years in theater, in Yugoslav drama theater. I play Iago in Otello. I play uh, Trepljev in Cecho, uh, Siegel, or, 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 all that classic. I play Moliere, whatever. So, but it's a serious theater, it's a serious process of doing it, and they applaud in the end, that's it. And this is really, really fast track, well, and, how do you and it's a little bit brutal, you say. It is brutal, like, yeah. how do you feel about, uh, well, the first, uh, there's this saying that the first 50 times, everyone in stand-up is shit. And you have to go through <laughs> those 50 times, and you have to suffer through open mics and... Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and you kind of, when, when, when you write a joke down and you craft it and you rewrite it and then, and then you, you, you put a lot of work in it and then you bring it out and it's like your child and you show it to everyone and everyone's like, it's ugly. Yeah, and you're like, oh. Oh, let's do it back to the drawing board. But I, I had that luck or, uh, uh, that I have uh, experience already in a theater and everything. And also I talk that it, I, I don't write actual jokes, you know, I'm not a one-liner. I'm telling a stories from my life and most of my stories are being an actor and being uh, in a good shape or bad shape, having a good night or bad night. Yeah. And people relate to that. I also tried with all my colleagues, you know, you try with your family, you try with yeah, everybody. You, it out and everyone. you just get it, oh, this is good. I remember we, we, were, we were on some dinner and I remember one story when the horse ran away from a play. Excuse me? Yeah, the horse ran away from a play. They put it in a theater. <laughs> yeah, they put There's the so much to yeah, unpack. Yeah. There is a horse in a theater play, and they didn't rehearse with the horse. So when they put the fire and smoke, horse, horse was like, I'm, I'm leaving. Call my agent. And the horse <laughs> just left. So I tell that story, and my friend is on the horse. <laughs> you know? And he was like, just... So the story is crazy. The cop stops the horse. Can you imagine? It's a long story and very, really funny. And I just remember that. And my wife said when we're coming back to home, hey, you should put that horse story in your next wow. stand up. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So whenever you have idea, you have some story that is funny, I just write it down as a, as a, as a reminder. Oh, horse story. And then you just say it. And because I... Because it actually happened, so... It's actually, 
all the things I'm saying happened. That's what is all funny about it, because you cannot invent life. Life is more crazy, funny, brutal sometimes. Yes. Uh, and when you tell a story from a distance of time, it become comedy. You know, tragedy, yes, sir. Uh, you add time and become a comedy. So that, that was my formula in a, in a head. Right. When, uh, when, you're, when you're choosing the uh, risk-free profession of becoming an actor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but it is risk-free, really. It is risk-free? Cause, yeah. Cause wh what, is, what is the worst case scenario that happened to the actor? You can be failed and you can be laughed. And that's it. That's the worst case scenario. Well, but from, from where I see it, like when, when you choose to become an actor, you either become a good actor or, or, a, good or a good drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you manage to, uh, to, to avoid becoming the latter? How I quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, I tell you, it's, uh, it, is, it is a serious for you because it's embarrassment. That's the bottom line. What can worst happen? You can just be embarrassed. And you can say, okay, this is not for me. And right. that's the worst case. But if you are a doctor, somebody can die. And it's really not that easy. Or you're f flying a plane. Or that's the serious business. You, uh, you have a very good point you, there. You know, this is it. Uh, the worst case scenario, I can just be stupid in front of a lot of people, and that's life. That's, it, that's not that hard, actually. There are a lot of politicians doing that <laughs> really successfully, more better than me. You know? Yeah, but in order to you, you uh, know, get embarrassed... We, we, sometimes actors and the, all the artists, as we perceive ourselves as artists, as the craftsmen, you know, you overthink sometimes our business, and you think, oh, this is so important, this is... we are. Uh, like all the actors saying in our, my country, we, we are the priests of the Talia, goddess, or whatever. Oh, that's the mm, old school way of looking school, at it. But we are not priests, we are just actors, you know. We are, we are we, we're just telling story, we are living other lives and learning about our life and everything. I really like this, I love this craft because I was bad in mathematics, you know. That's... To be, to be That's quite always honest. an out. Yeah, I was bad in mathematics, I was bad in languages, I was really lazy and everything, so I thought, okay, I can be an actor. So you kind of had no <laughs> I choice. I had everything for a good, an act, good actor. Yeah, because if, if you're bad at school, uh, and yeah. you're from Serbia, yeah. uh, from, from you're bad Yugoslavia, in That's, yeah, that's it. it, it's either football, tennis, ten basketball, tennis or bat, or, yeah. Yeah. or you become or a good actor. Or you become an actor. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, uh, when did you do, uh, under, realize, like, yeah. fully that you're going to become an actor? I never realized it, you know, I, I just couldn't be anything else. Uh, anything else I tried didn't, didn't hang, you know, <laughs> so that was it. Uh, I, was, uh, I started as a kid in uh, Radio uh, Belgrade. They had a group for the kids for a radio program. I know it sounds really old, but it was... It sounds amazing. It, it, it happened, like it was 80s, whatever. So the, the test for it was, can you read? And I was seven years old, I could read, and they say, okay, can you read? I read some newspapers, and they say, okay, you're in. So that's how it started. I could read, that was a good feature. And uh, yeah, I didn't have any kind of Sprachfeller, how you say, it, uh -huh. whatever. So that was also helpful, and I was blonde. Can you imagine, I had a blue. Ooh, yeah, you yeah. were blonde. Yeah, I was blonde, and I have a, 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 a glasses because I'm blind, actually. <laughs> yeah, so it, that was really cute, kid, and everything. So they really liked me on a radio, of course, and then the television started also. So they put us in a television program. So we were having some uh, shows. You're reading something. Do, I played the the pe, pe, uh, small prince. How you say it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Exupéry. Uh huh. So, yeah, so, because I was looking like, like that child or that yeah, prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I started. And when I how was... How old were you? I was seven. Seven? Yeah. But my first TV show actually was when I was four. Four? Yeah. And it was a New Year's show. I'm putting the, the, uh, uh, the, the string through the needle. And when I put it, it's a new year. But because of, this, uh, of the reflection, 
they told me put your sun put your glasses out so i was blind i was like <laughs> <laughs> and they were laughing and they say oh this is cute so that was the new year's program in those days you know blind children <laughs> <laughs> now it's not allowed anymore, this is, and it's not funny, but in those days we're like, oh. <laughs> but do you think we had more freedoms uh, back in the day? Because you could, actually there was uh, talking about bl bl blind yeah. uh, uh, interactions with uh, blind people. We had yeah. this show, it was called uh, Three Minutes of Fame. And uh, so this girl won the show, well, won the whole thing. Uh -huh. She was blind, Whoa. and uh, as, <laughs> as a gift for winning the competition, she got a photo camera, a <laughs> digital photo camera. I shit you not, that, that actually happened. And everyone was like, uh, uh, is, well, that, is, is that is, supposed is that, to be funny? Or what? That, yeah, exactly. It, because it's not, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, wow, but how did you, uh, like, because we know a lot of stories about uh, ch ch child stars. Yeah. Uh, th they they kind of, they get screwed I, I, up I, in the head after. Yeah, I, but I never, uh, my, my luck was I never been a star. You know, you just uh -huh. get recognized on the street because there was a two channels in our country. Right. And when you are on television, everybody knows you. You say, hey, you're, you're that kid from a telly. Yes. You, you know? Uh, now it's embarrassing, actually, to be on the telly, <laughs> if you think about it. But in those days, it was a huge thing. But I'd never been a star in that sense, you know? So yes, maybe but, that helped me. But, yes, but, like, in terms of school, you were still the most recognizable face it, it, in it, that particular yeah, it, school. It, 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 yeah, it was nice. I don't want to lie to you. It was really nice, you know? But sometimes it's... Uh, I don't know. It's, it helps. But it can be a problem also, you know, because there is always five boys who think they should be on a television, yes. not you. <laughs> you uh, took their job. Yeah, and you're like, took her uh, and you should be more uh, faster than them. You should run more uh, and faster, you know. <laughs> outrun your competition, yeah, 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 that's yeah, right. Yeah, outrun your competition, <laughs> literally, you know. So that, that, that was it. And I, when I was 17, uh, uh, in, uh, after three years of high school, I decided to go to faculty. Immediately, you can do it in, in Serbia. When you're 16, I think you, you, sh you, you can try. If you're really talented. Uh, yeah, and then you have to go to some exams to just finish yeah. a high school, whatever. So I, I did it, and I, I, I get in Academy of Drama Art. There was uh, 10 of us. It was 680 people that year trying to become actors. And you I did think, it. Yeah, but I think 600 was uh, girls and only 80 boys. <laughs> but that was it. I was, I was lucky or, I don't know, talented enough. But I really don't believe in talent. I don't really can explain what the talent is. You know? It's like uh, you believe in hard work and dedication. There and is a hard work always, but y you can hard work uh, wrongly. Like you can exercise wrongly and you don't gonna get the muscles anytime. You, you can know? try to chop a tree down with a branch. Yeah, yeah, well, you can try all that stuff, but understanding is more important and uh, the will to exercise for me is a talent, you know? Yes, sir. Really, really, really will to understand where you went wrong and try to shift, try to understand not to be uh, devastated about it, you are devastated, but after a while you say, okay, maybe I can try to be better. And I like to read about acting, I like to watch movies, I like theater, I, I really like, uh, when I start studying, I really understood what this job is, you know. What is the job? But it's not this. This is the side show, and this is the business, this is the, 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 the business side of the job. But the real job is understanding uh, human beings, how you behave, how you, and, uh, how you feel, how you react on your feelings, how you hide your feelings, uh, where you sit, uh, where you hold your hands. And when I started studying, that was really a new world for me. You just, oh man, look how this guy walking, and you see he's walking on a finger, so oh, maybe he's a little bit, you know, this and that, you can just read 
people or invent are you, people. Are you a collector? Yeah, I am. I, whatever do, you, do you watch people and then when you find something interesting about uh, a certain person, yes, some trait of, of his character? I'm always stealing. You're you know, like, I, I steal a couple of things from my kids. Psychopathic, you know? right? Yeah, because that's your job. That's your job to, to understand how people behave, how they... Uh, you start with yourself and then you, 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 you start to understand in one moment in life that all the people are you. And you are the old, old people. You, you are, when somebody say, this is, this is me, this is my... I said, yeah, man, I'm sure, give me 21 days, and we can change all that and start all over again. So you have some preferences, as to say, maybe you are tall, small, fat, whatever, right. you know, you're white, green, whatever. That's, some, that's the beginning, but what happens inside you, it's really blank of paper. You can write whatever you want, actually. You can become whatever you want. And you're a shapeshifter. Huh? You're a shapeshifter. Yeah, you're sh but y you are, as a person. Mm -hmm. You didn't, uh, that uh, haircut you have, or my haircut. I saw it on a Nigel Williams, you know? Yes, sir. So I saw it somewhere, uh, uh, maybe not, uh, not uh, uh, rationally, fully, but we are always imitating what we see. We just grab, I know, I think the David Bowie said it. I'm like a racing car. I just put the parts I like and I put it in mm -hmm. myself and make it work. That's it. It's simple as that. So I don't want to say that you are nothing, but you can become whatever you want and you can become any character you want. And you as an actor, I think it's your duty to uh, defend the character, just to understand him fully and to defend him, to say, from his point of view, yeah, it's like, it's like that, you know, especially when you play those villains like Iago or, or, or those guys, you say, nah, he's not good. He's not good from the perspective of Otello. But if you yes, look sir. from his perspective, he's, he's really also vulnerable and, uh, and uh, jealous and all stuff because Shakespeare is a good writer. It's kind of scary how uh, if an actor has to depict like a serial killer, yeah. he, in his process of preparation, he has to underst well, understand his truth, understand his motives, uh, and, and legalize the uh, whole monstrosity within himself. Bec yes, uh, of, course, of course we are talking about uh, 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 people who are not borderline, like some psychopathic behavior, this and that. That's really complicated, but in a way, there is a logic in a psychopath. Like, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, like in, uh, I don't know, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, uh, Sir Hopkins is playing it brutally, honestly. You know, he just like good food in his... Happens to be. Happens to be your liver, but nevertheless, it's a good food if you know how to prepare it. You know, so from his angle, <laughs> he's just in a chase of a good meal. Not uh, kill, he's not killing people, he's just get fed. Preparing food. food. Yeah, that's it. So that's, that's, that's really weird angles, but you have to understand, and that's, then you start to understand, I think, life more, more uh, 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 with more, uh, I say, uh, more understanding of life, because you start to understand all the angles, because it's just the angle how you look some stuff. Unfortunately, it's like that. There is no truth, good, bad. Some people are good for their family, you know? And they're really bad for everybody else, you know? Like pirates. That's usually what happens. Yeah, you know? But he's a good pirate for his family that's waiting on some island. He's bringing gold and... Yeah, he and kisses his daughter goodnight. Yeah, he says, hey, Papa, bring you gold. Yeah, thank you, Papa, you know? It's, it's Here's crazy. the teddy bear. Don't <laughs> yeah. ask where he came yeah, from. Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh, this is the hand. We just need the rings. Sorry, <laughs> baby. Play with this. You know, it is what it is. Um, what was your uh, first huge part? That w did did you have like a breakthrough? Uh, In my career. Yes, sir. No, I was I was like always there. You know, I just started. There, so I got one movie, to second movie. To, I, I my first movie I did when I was six. I started playing in theater when I was six. Uh, and after that, I start playing in Yugoslav drama theater. I played 150 shows every year, at least. 
I made a lot of movies. So some, some movies were successful and make more uh, tracking around the people, uh, or more, more fans, but uh, the television is the, 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 the strongest. Uh, and everybody watch television. So when you show your face on telly, you are woohoo. But I, I really didn't care much about it. I, I, I understood immediately when I was, I was a kid, there's a moment everybody recognizes you and there's a moment nobody recognizes you. For me, that's happening here, you know. I can barely walk through Serbia. Wherever I go, it's always photos. That I can freely walk here. Nobody knows who I am. So, Welcome to Lithuania. Yeah, yeah, but that's life, you know. So actually, I'm not uh, famous. I'm just popular in one place and not popular in other places. That happened to me. It's a sobering experience. I went uh, in Milan, in Italy, and I had a suit. And I'm driving with a tube, with a metro. And one lady is looking at me, and I'm used to that in Serbia, and I'm always, like, smiling. So I smiled, and she's like, who is this? And I then understood I'm not handsome, I'm not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just popular, you know, that, that was it. It was sobering experience, really bitter, and, but th that's, that's true. That's it's like really when, true. Uh, yeah. when people come up to you with a phone and yeah. uh, you're thinking, oh, here comes the selfie, and they're like, could you take a picture, picture of us? Of yeah, I, I like that also. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what Madonna was saying once, she was really disappointed. Somebody wanted uh, to, to take a picture with her. And she said, after a while, the bodyguards were there. She said, OK, let the guy in. And the guy came and took selfie and immediately started scrolling through the phone and sending the picture and everything. And Madonna said, I'm standing next right there. to him. And he don't want to talk to me. He don't want anything. He used me. He don't need me anymore. Now he's sending a message. I made a picture with Madonna. And Madonna was like, but I'm really here. So, yeah, we are all slaves, slaves of these uh, machines. Are you, uh, do, you Slave? do you enjoy your smartphone? Not so much. Not so much. I'm, I'm getting old, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it first through the mobile phone. You know, I'm like, when they want to give me a new phone, I said, no, 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 I like this old one. It's, I Does have your phone still have I buttons? I have Snake, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> Nokia you know, 3310. You know, and it's a big letters. I like it like this, you know. And my kids, you can just throw away and put a new phone. And they were like, OK, immediately they, oops. No problem. You did it. Yes, sir. Cool. OK. I tend to no, be no, reckless. No, 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 I just. It, it, it was yeah, yeah, it's just because yeah. I'm uh, drunk. Yeah. So that, that's, that's how you define uh, young people. Like, they, are, uh, they, they, they can do it again and again and again. Are you already They'll, lost in technolo technological-wise? Of course. I, I didn't that's want to. That's it? I hated Facebook, MySpace, ByBase, those things. I was like, wow, I'm a, I'm a huge star. I don't want to be, no, I don't want to share every day of my life with people. Yeah, this is me in a panties, this is me without panties, this is me flowering flowers, I don't know, well, who cares? <laughs> and also, i doing interviews or whatever, and I thought it should be really uh, picked uh, and rare that become, uh, 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 then become interesting. If you every day see what a guy doing, and say, ah, it's boring, this is quite... But my daughter told me, Hey, Daddy, let's open Instagram. I think that's a good idea. People love what you do, and you can choose the pictures you're going to put it there. Because most of the time, it's only paparazzi picture, you know? So I'm walking somewhere, and they took a picture of me, or I'm eating, whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's really ugly. So you can choose the pictures. Uh, and I thought, okay, that's, that's, I like pictures. I think that's really nice. Something. That is a form of art. Yeah, one of my pictures was... Uh, choose for a Vilnius uh, 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 website when we were shooting show here three years ago. Or, or yes, there. sir. Yeah, uh, I took one picture near the cathedral there. It was really lovely, crazy day with the sun and the and the and the clouds and everything. And I put it on my Instagram, and they contacted me from a Vilnius uh, touristic organization. Can we use this picture? I was like, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. So now, oh, wait a minute. Now, are you a poster? Uh, are, are you now 
an official uh, no, Vilnius? Vilnius, I think it was three, representation. Uh, it was three, three years ago, and part of presentation of Vilnius is one picture from my Instagram. So Look, this is the face of Vilnius, a this Serbian is guy. It. The, yeah, but it, I was lucky. It was a really beautiful day, and it really looked strangely, nicely, weirdly a good picture. Uh, I was lucky, yeah. How do you like? Uh, how do you enjoy the uh, the whole Lithuania experience uh, when uh, you when first? We were work yes, yes. Yeah. When we were, when you were working here, we, we were working here in 2020. We yes, came sir. here to do the show, and we will not say the name of the show because we are in strike. But you know what show it is. And uh, we came here in 2020. It was January, and we start shooting. And uh, crazy thing happened. There was no snow. And all Lithuanians were like, sorry, uh, sorry, we, I, we don't know These how These things it, happen. Yeah, never. They said maybe in 20 years was one day in January without snow. It's just that Lithuanian weather, yeah. we, it's, uh, we're, it's done. We're not... It's we're, changing, I, I'm sure. But if, in the weather forecast part of the news, yeah. they just have a guy going like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Something's yeah, going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring umbrella, maybe you will not need just it. Just yeah, prepare just for try. anything. But we've been here, and they made two kilometers of, uh, it's nice to be in good old measurements, two kilometers, uh, yes, of, sir. Yeah, two kilometers of fake snow. Two kilometers yeah, of fake snow. Somewhere in uh, forests there, you know? And uh, we shoot for two weeks, and one, uh, and I remember we coming back from a, from a shooting, and the producer, Ian, was like, and I said, Mr. Ian, what's going on? He said, Nico, this corona thing is not good. We, 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 we will stop. And then we stopped, and then we went home. And one year later, we came again in 2021. And uh, Oh, we had snow in 2021. And then we had yes. snow like this. It was minus 26. And Lithuania was like, hey, I yeah. we told you, we told you. Uh -huh. you just, just be patient. These one things moment, happen. It's a warm Lithuanian welcome, minus 26. So <laughs> I, I, I thought the camera will not work, but no, the camera worked really good. And the crew was really nice, and they were experienced, and you should be really proud about them. Uh, we have amazing people in yeah, the film they, industry. Yeah, they work on Chernobyl, they work on uh, 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 Vikings. Yes, sir. They work on our show also. So it, 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 they're really experienced, and they have electricity in the boots and in jackets, so they can be outside or, uh, on that cold for, for a long time. You mentioned uh, the strike. Yeah, can we strike. talk a bit about. Yes, uh, could yes. You, could if, you talk if about the people are interested, what the strike is all about. So we have two guilds. It's uh, like syndicate. They don't like to call syndicate because they are so scared of socialism. <laughs> Who cares? Okay, but it's a syndicate, guild, whatever. And the writers had the main issue. Uh, th there was two issues that were same for writers and for an actors. Uh, it's uh, they don't want to share uh, how much some show was watched. They don't want to share information about it. So it's very hard to get uh, residuals, how you call it. So uh -huh. uh, extra pay for, uh, for, for showing your show. And they need to share some revenue with us. They don't want to do it. Because they say it's our model of uh, business, and we don't want to, you don't know how m any show was watched on those streamers. Yeah, yeah, just go do your acting thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, we're gonna, uh, and when, when the guilds made the first agreement, they didn't know how the thing will develop. It was the beginning of the, of the streamers. So they say, okay, we will, when we see how it goes, we will find the formula how we're going to do it. To, 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 to make it simple, we had the Adam Driver and Jessica Chastain our members of SAG, Screen Actors Guild, they were in uh, Venice and they were promoting one movie because that small production agree for the SAG rules. So they agree. So small production can agree and the big production say, no, no, this is really complicated. We cannot do it. And so it said to me that the, 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 what the Screen Actors want, it's something normal, something that can be afforded with the small production, so I'm sure it can be done for the big one. The second uh, problem was uh, artificial intelligence. 
They want no, that one is uh, is that a doozy. Is, yeah, because it's a it's a, it's a, in, it's a kind of rev industrial revolution, in a, in a way they say it's a canary in a coal mine. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, too dramatic, but it is. It is. It's not simple labor. Uh, the factory owner clash, give us more money and less work. Yes, no, sir. it's not. It's not about that. Like our colleagues said, in the agreement now you're gonna have. It's going to be written. The actor must be human being. So it is really like strange thing to to say. I, I, I was sure it's going to be a, a human. But for writers, it was a big problem. Now they just signed it for three years. Uh, like a producer use a machine to make, to generate a script. And let's say I want to make a script from a, uh, about uh, sunglasses, chips, and a handsome guy. And the computer will do it in two minutes, and you get a 200-page pages of a uh, story about sunglasses, chips, and a handsome guy. But it's stupid. It's not organic. There is nothing to it. It's not a good story. There are elements of handsomeness, uh, sunglasses, and, and chips, but there is no organic feeling of it. So you call the writers to fix it, and they fix it. But you pay them as a fixers. Not and you, as a creator. Not as a creators. And when you get Oscar, for example, the producer who owns machine got the Oscar, and, and, not, the, and not the writers. Actually, because you're just a uh, just a fixer. Just you a just fixer. came to fix something, and the writers didn't want. To. Also, we had a problem with our extras for the actors. They want to scan you one day, and use it forever, and never pay you again, never call you again, and anything. And it's. Uh, and everybody said, "Who cares?" Would about they be Would they be able to uh, use your image, scanned yeah, image, in other productions as well? Of course. Like they can use it for commercials, for whatever, anything, the, the, anything. Or uh, as I said, you can make a movie about Tom Cruise chasing Tom Cruise, and all the. Good I would watch that movie. All the bad guys, all the good guys, all the female characters is just Tom. It's just Tom Cruise. Yeah, and I, would, Tom, I would watch yeah, the shit out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But Tom gets zero of it. That it, just makes it better. No, yeah, just yeah. It, it, it would be really, it would be really perfect if you, can, we, you know, we cannot put how they say genie back in a bottle. It's in, it's a revolution. It's something. It's a tool. And if we use the tool, like any tool, for normal purposes and with the respect of the working people or whoever is, because. For example, when you came to the store first time and there was no lady on a, on a cashier. Yeah. You and you didn't say, where is this lovely lady, what she's eating now? You said, oh, this is fun. I'm working for her now. Yes. You know? And that was artificial intelligence, actually. You know, when the chess players lo lost for the first time from a computer, they say, hey, part of the machine is smarter than you. Find a new job. You know, we were, we were like, okay, that's... This is maybe a moment, I'm not sure, maybe next, in 10 years, you will sit in here talking to an avatar. Now but I'll be working at a uh, farm they, for a they, they will lose you computer. Also. Yeah, maybe they lose all of you. So the machines will watch machines talking about machines. I don't know, maybe that's, is it, that, maybe it's going to be fun. Is it weird how, uh, when you first saw The Matrix, Yeah. you were like, Oh, this is amazing how they thought of it. And then now, if you, if you skip this now, and if you watch it now, it's like, oh. No, no, no. We, uh, oh, uh, no. oh, this could, oh. No, when we uh, watched Matrix, we knew it. Oh, man, this is going to happen. But at that time, yeah. I didn't have the feeling like it's, well, I thought, well, this is a very interesting idea. And when I think about it now, it's like, it's oh scary. shit! That this is oh this is this, this is exactly, exactly where we're going. What, what is different in in the Matrix? You know, the machines are machines, machines making machines, and all the machines that are made, people are making it, and because there is no computer uh, making a poetry like this is my computer and he's writing songs. Because if you don't push the computer, computer will just play chess with himself all day. You know, whatever computers do, nothing yet. Yeah, but uh, also I talk with some people who are actually uh, IE uh, experts and making computers who, who make actors. 
So you can, uh, Lady explain me, we do it with the Shakespeare. So we put all the Shakespeare's uh, uh, poems, uh, uh, letters, all plays he played, he, he wrote. We put in one basket. And then we say to machine, write us a new stuff from this. A machine can do it. And it's, it's, it sounds like Shakespeare. But it's stupid, still. It's, it's, lacking, it's lacking the spirit. A spirit of why you are writing it, yes, for sir. whom, who is saying it, whatever. But also I ask her, is that like Dadaistic poetry? If you don't know, it's okay. Uh, Dadaist made the idea of uh, cutting the song, any kind of poet, a po poetic song, and put it in a hat. And then you pull it out word by word and make a new song. So I asked that lady, is this like Dadaistic poetry? And she said, in a way, yes. Because there is no new words in that head of Shakespeare. You know, it's yeah, all yeah. words that he already written. So it's like a collage. There is nothing new. It's a collage of all photos that you saw. But it's too many now. All the movies that you saw. It's but making it, it like that. But isn't it kind of similar? There is nothing new. It's, is it, isn't it kind of similar how uh, the creativity of a human being works? Because uh, you get influenced by so many things. And then uh, this collage, it's either you put something, you create a new, uh, a new creation uh, from this collage, but you get some creativity going. But yeah, but and AI just uses this as uh, a tool without... But it is always collage. In art, there is some mistakes. You know, there is some... Uh, asymmetry. Asymmetry. There is some stupid stuff that you don't know why you did it. You know, uh, in painting or whatever. There is a new. And here, there is nothing new. It's always old stuff. It's going to be fun. I don't want... I, I think the artificial intelligence is a wrong name because there is nothing intelligent about it. You know, it's just a good, good... Machine, really good machine, like drum machine. Yes, sir. It's much easier than you going and, 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 and learn to play drums, and then you have to find the microphones that can really uh, sound it well, and then you need a good room to make it. This is simple. Pa, 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 pa. A machine say, tu, ka, tu, tu, ka, tu, tu, ka. I say, wow, man, I'm a drummer. No, you're not. You're just pressing good buttons, and everything's working. It's a good tool, but you know, that stupid tool can use somebody who don't have beat in himself or Beastie Boys and make it crazy, you know? So it's about using a you tool. Have to be, you yeah. have to have intelligence but, behind it? Uh, not a real intel or not organic even intelligence. Even not intelligence. I don't think you need intelligence. You need feelings. You, you need some irrational shit. You need uh, time that is boring, and then you are like, Oh, I know now. You know, that, that, that's how things come to your mind. Yeah. Not from, because machine said, okay, I need to do it now. And this is it. Uh, what is really good for, it's for essays, for school. Nobody will write any essay anymore because machine is really fast and really good. Better than you. Better than you Be because, because it's really fast. Machine doesn't need to read all that stuff. It has it already in memory, you know. Isn't that so, going to impair our learning ability? Oh, yes. But like a, like a calculator, you know. There was in good time one lady in India who can do the seven figures together. Yes, and we sir. were like, wow, this woman is a calculator. But now everybody has it in a, in a phone, you know. So it's a tool. And if we think about it as a tool, it's going to be really interesting. You know? Yeah, it's and, just like and, the, same, and, the same thing as when writing uh, uh, first appeared, because it was from uh, uh, before before yeah. that. Everyone was just telling them, uh, telling each other stories, and there were storytellers, and that's how uh, information was uh, yes, circling around. The, the level, yeah, and the then level, yeah. Uh, and then when you start, we, we discovered writing. Then we didn't have to memorize all these long stories, all these long epopeias, and. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so and it didn't eft us up. So I guess uh, the evolution hope, of mankind. I hope this, uh, I just hope that in, in one moment, it's, it's a, like a shuffle. You know, DJ Shuffle. Yes, the sir. The famous DJ Shuffle. So he chose songs just random. And he said, yo, it's so cool. He just 
choose this song and, and then this song. No, it's algorithm, and, and we make a sense of it. We make a meaning of it, you know? There is no meaning. Machine doesn't care. She said, you want to shuffle? Here you are. This is the shuffle. You know? And I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm hopeful that we're going to just use it and have fun with it. It will be really fun for me. I'm sitting here talking to you and making two movies simultaneously. That would be really that nice. Is, if, but it's only fun if you get paid. Yeah, n n just, <laughs> not, not just paid, you know. It's, it's some kind of respect of you as a human being. Like, I cannot use your face and put it on any commercial I want it. Yes, sir. I need to ask you, and then you say, okay. And then, then we're going to talk about money or whatever, or your, wh what you want. But... Uh, in, uh, it is innovation, and it could save a lot of money, save, uh, especially for uh, special effects. You don't need actors or, or, or extras or, or stuntmen, stuntmen in yeah. really serious, uh, dangerous moments. In good, we don't use them anymore. Matrix, half of the Matrix were like just generalized image, computer image, you know? A couple of... Uh, close-ups of Keanu, that was it, you know, but he needs to be part of that. And we need to communicate, we are, we are working something, and we need humans as a craft, as a, as a brain, as a users of a craft, of an art. Do you think uh, the users of, like, the audience, yeah. uh, do you think there will be a point uh, that, that when they will accept AI-generated uh, stuff uh, instead of uh, or equally to the real organic... Uh... We are already there. We are already watching a lot of stuff that ER did, you know, and we don't care. Like in music videos, it's easy. You don't need anything. You just press button and machine make it. And it's like, wow, it's crazy interesting, you know. But uh, like, uh, like electronic music, you know, yeah. It was like hype in one moment, and, and everybody said goodbye. Nobody will play a cello or a violin yeah. anymore. But we still have a Mozart concerts and everything. Like a radio, we thought, man, if when you saw the television, you say, who will ever listen to this box with people inside? You know? Yes, sir. But the radio is still here. I started on radio. Maybe that's why I like it still. Uh, I think this is also something like that. It's a new toy, it's a fun, it's excited, but we're gonna find a way and I'm, I'm sure it's gonna become a very nice tool and very nice, uh, li like uh, I told you, li li like that electronic music. Some I... DJs are fun and cool because they have beat, they have soul, they have something, and other one like just shuffle it, you know? <laughs> my favorite DJ is DJ my, Shuffle. My favorite DJ Shuffle. Oh, DJ, DJ Shuffle. <laughs> MC Random. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Shuffle and MC <laughs> Random. <laughs> Coming right up. First place in Austria. Yeah. Uh, sir, well, we started with uh, radio and we're ending with radio. Uh, that's it was a, nice, uh, that's a, a real nice circle, a real uh, full circle. Yeah, it was real yeah. pleasure uh, talking to you. Hey, Welcome you so back much. to Lithuania. Thank you so much for this. I hope it was interesting. Not so many people left, so thank you, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Nikola Judisko. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stop everything. Stop. We have a question. We have a question. We have a question. Hello, sir. Okay. Hello, Nicola. Hi. Hello, Hi. Um, I have actually two questions. One of them is uh, portraying Slavic characters in Hollywood. Um, I noticed that your uh, accent is smooth. Uh, yeah, not that rough. Not that rough. Thank you. How, how Hollywood uh, we would liked like, that. Would they, like, yes. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, a couple of years ago, we had uh, Stefan Kapicic. Here, oh, yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. And his uh, Colossus portrayal was very yeah. cho chopped. He's rough. playing like this. Yes. He's talking yes. like this. Yeah. Ha like a real. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been asked to be more Slavic? Yeah, yeah. For, for, for this role in this show, I will not mention. They, they told me I need to speak more, more Russian, 
a more uh, like that kind of broken English and everything. But I think uh, my opinion is always, I understand, whatever I try, they always hear me. They hear that I'm not originally American English or whoever I am. So for me, it's more important that we understand each other and that my accent is not eating all character, all around my character, you know? When somebody is speaking like that so much, you know, and then you cannot listen to that guy long, you know, it becomes boring. So I'm trying to be soft so they understand, but they want it, they want it like that. Like, yeah, they, they want it Russian, full uh, Ru Russian uh, 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 accent, how they call it. But oh. I, I don't know what actually we mean, Russian accent. It's like anybody from Eastern Europe have a almost their accent. Yes. Accent. Yeah. <laughs> yes, друзья. Accent. <laughs> accent. Uh, it's, a very <laughs> it's a very nice accent. And uh, the second question, you being a um, uh, character in uh, the land of blood and honey yeah. and uh, in World War Z, yep. how close are you with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and uh, do you have some stories to share? <laughs> Uh, but they are not close anymore, so uh, that, that's really sad. But uh, I worked on that first movie she directed, uh, Land of Blood, Blood and Honey, and it was really, really nice experience. Uh, I met a lot of my colleagues from Bosnia. We were in war, and I thought it was really nice experience for all of us to work on one movie and to talk to each other. What, where were you during the war? What were you doing there? How? You did, did you lost anybody? You know, it it was really nice, and uh, Angelina was really nice to help me find agent in London, through that I get this job, from that agent. Uh, also, she insisted that I play in World War Z, uh, uh, because my father is a pilot, and she remember, oh, his father is a pilot. He should be a pilot in that movie. It's a small role, so. Uh, I, 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 I've been on a couple of dinners with her and everything, and she's really, really nice and helpful. Because we saw this uh, very beautiful picture of you and Brad Pitt coming to, she, together. Yeah, also Angie insisted about that. She said, hey, Nico, we, we're going to have a sh photo shoot, so just come out, and the Brad will wait for you, and we're going to make that picture. And she knew that picture will be important for me. The Brad Pitt was Brad Pitt already, you know. He didn't have me, didn't need my picture with me to become more famous, but that picture really helped me uh, book a lot of jobs and just to explain what I did, what I worked, yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, but for a Slavic people, you ask me that, you're right, there is some uh, cliche of it, you know, especially for the 80s when the Cold War was uh, more uh, intensive, but now it's almost, you need a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, you need a bad guy. But I, I, I really like what I like about my character in this show is he's a bad guy. But from the perspective of them, he's actually a good guy. And in one moment, he becomes a good guy, you know? And that's what I like. So uh, in the good shows, you don't have that clean cut from a, a protagonist, antagonist. It's always a mixture of this and that. And I also play in For All Mankind, and I play very nice uh, uh, Russian astronaut. And he's a really cool guy, and they meet in uh, Stanitsa Mir in, uh, in a space, and it, it was a really good experience. You know, so there is... Uh, I'm always happy to play the character who have uh, maybe bad... Uh, you have a bad feeling in the beginning, but as the show going on, you find out he's a human being also. He has all these uh, emotions like we do. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro, Thank you for very questions. Much. Yeah, next one. Oh. Uh, ciao, Nikola, Nemanja yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so he's asking me on Serbian, did I find any better food than cevapi uh, all around the world? Uh, it, it's, not it, it's not better, it couldn't be uh, said better, but uh, different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, uh, in Berlin is the best kebab, couldn't you believe. Uh, in uh, LA, Los Angeles, they eat a lot of avocado and that uh, healthy food. So I'm really 
started to understand what the salad means. Uh, uh, yeah, in London is a fish and chips. That was far that I, I went for a London food, but it's nice with a good beer. It's, it's really nice on a rainy day. So, yeah. Yeah, but Charlie Chev, it's Chev. Okay, Puno. Thank you, bro. Thank you. All right, thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen.